What's up, Yuga Nation? It's your boy Enzo from Yuga Tech, and YouTube Music and Premium just launched here in the Philippines last November 14, and I'm sure you're all wondering, what's the fuzz all about? I'm sure we all are familiar with Spotify. They've been in the game here in the Philippines since 2014, and it's been my go-to music app ever since. A year later, Apple comes out with their own service to compete with Spotify, Apple Music. But even before music streaming apps took the world by storm, we've already been streaming our music through websites like YouTube. And now that YouTube Music is here, do we have to make a switch? We'll be comparing Spotify, YouTube Music, and Apple Music all together and see which music streaming service reigns supreme. So, without further ado, let's get started! Okay, let's start with Spotify and open that up. We're greeted with a UI that most of us nowadays are quite familiar with. Dark interface and easy to understand right from the get-go. With Apple Music, we get that nice, clean, white interface because, well, it's Apple. YouTube Music, on the other hand, has somewhat of a cross between the Spotify UI and the signature interface of the classic YouTube app. With Spotify, tapping on the Home tab gives you diverse sets of recommendations based on your recent listening choices. With YouTube Music, you not only get the same features but also a playlist on recommended videos. I mean, after all, it is YouTube. One thing though that seems to stand out with YouTube Music's home tab is the size of its thumbnails for album covers and playlists. Its large size graphics makes it easy to scan through songs and playlists without opening either one. On Apple Music, instead of the home tab, we get a separate browse tab showing trending artists, songs, music videos, and Apple's very own programming such as artist documentaries. When it comes to searching, Spotify gives almost instantaneous results. Apple Music and YouTube are slightly slower, but it's not really that big of a deal breaker. What's really nice about Apple and YouTube though is that when you search for a song, it automatically gives you an extensive playlist based on the song you just played. Unlike Spotify where they just play different versions of the song title. You'd have to navigate to the song radio to be able to hear songs related to the one you just listened to. Not a big problem for me, but having less things to tap sounds more convenient. Spotify has Discover Weekly, a playlist that automatically updates every Monday, featuring songs based on what you've been listening to the week prior. Apart from that, we also get daily mixes and release radar where you can catch the latest music of your favorite artists. With Apple, we get a For You tab that curates recommendations that are based on your listening preferences. Apple Music also has a radio tab which features their Beats 1 channel that offers live radio 24 hours a day. It also plays a big role in the music discovery as well. Spotify doesn't exactly have this feature but when you create a station from a song, artist, album, or playlist, Spotify Radio picks the music out for you. And generally speaking, I prefer Spotify's suggestion algorithm better. Although YouTube Music currently has no radio service, they do have their own Discover Mix that is updated every Wednesday with new featured artists and lesser known tracks from your favorite artists. What sets YouTube Music apart from Spotify and Apple Music is the user's ability to search for actual real-time live music and fan covers. While Apple Music does feature live music, it's usually remastered tour albums or already post-recorded live performances. In this area, Spotify cannot compare as it does not have a live music feature. Interestingly enough, it's only Apple Music that has an integrated lyrics option for its songs, which we liked a lot. While both YouTube Music and Spotify claim to have the same feature, Spotify's lyrics are powered by Genius, which actually gives you only snippets of lyrics and fun facts on how the song was made on the featured artist. Keep in mind though that these are only available in chart-topping or popular songs. On a similar note, YouTube Music's lyrics come from fan videos or lyric videos released by the artist's channel, far from the integrated lyrics option of Apple Music. If you're a podcast type of person, then I guess Spotify is for you. Amongst the three, Spotify is the only app that features a built-in podcast section unlike YouTube Music and the Apple Music, which have their own dedicated podcast apps. Personally, I prefer them separate, but I'm sure some would appreciate this. But if we're talking solely on music track collection, Apple Music reigns in number one with over 60 million tracks and counting. Spotify is not far off with 50 million and YouTube with an undisclosed number since they also carry a variety of uncurated song versions as well. It's also safe to say that you can save and stream music even if you're offline in all three services. With the Spotify app, we get the option to choose four streaming qualities in increments up to 320 kbps. It's also good to note that the higher the streaming quality, 
the more data it uses. Apple, on the other hand, streams at a constant 256 kbps with no other choice, while YouTube Music can do either 128 or 256 kbps. One thing YouTube has that Spotify and Apple don't is the ability to watch videos, but keep in mind that this will consume more data. Unless you're a serious audiophile, we don't think you'll be noticing the differences in streaming quality anyway. It's also good to mention all three have built-in equalizers in the app, so you can make your own necessary adjustments when needed. But if the highest audio fidelity is really important to you, consider a service that can handle lossless music streaming, such as Deezer which costs $129 per month. When it comes to compatible hardware, Spotify is no slouch. Spotify enables you to stream your music through other connected devices, and even if you're not connected to the same network, Spotify can still detect your home device and have them remotely play no matter where you are. Apple Music, on the other hand, recently updated its software and can now cast to your compatible devices in the same network, much like Spotify. YouTube Music adopts the same thing and we're given the option to either cast the video or just have the audio playing there as well. Pretty cool. When it comes to desktop compatibility, Spotify has their own dedicated app for the desktop and has a similar user interface as the mobile app version. I find myself using this a lot when I'm at home and just use my phone as a remote when needed. Apple Apple Music, on the other hand, requires the user to have iTunes installed, but if you don't want to, Apple recently launched their web-based app, which looks similar to the iTunes interface. Just keep in mind that it's still in its beta stages though. As for YouTube Music, we don't really get a dedicated program. Rather, we also get a web interface that, to me, looks very pleasing to the eye, and it just really looks like a love child of Spotify and YouTube. And to me, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The fact that it sparks familiarity, it helps bridge new users into using this service more. When it comes to pricing, all three services are competitively priced at $129 per month. The only thing that separates them from one another is the trial period. YouTube Music has a trial period of one month, while Spotify and Apple Music gives you a trial period of three months before needing to pay. Spotify does have a free option, but we don't really think it's worth looking at since you're only limited to listening to songs on Shuffle. Apple Music only offers their Beats 1 radio station for free, or you can listen to your songs in your iTunes library. Apart from that, you're only given 6 song skips per hour. Yikes. Here's a cool thing about YouTube Music though. If you add a little more, you can get YouTube Premium for $159 per month. Having YouTube Premium doesn't only mean ad-free music, but we can finally say goodbye to those annoying video ads as well. And to us here in Yugatech, that option is a godsend. So good on you, YouTube. So if you're familiar with the term, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, Spotify is exactly that. I still prefer its intuitive UI and the ability to cast to different devices and use your phone as a remote is a major plus for me. Apple Music doesn't trail far from Spotify. It's got an intuitive software that you can tell is meant to be used on Apple devices. Although we have the same exact app for Android, there can be some tendencies wherein you'll find the interface to be slow. It shouldn't be a bother, but if you're used to how fast Spotify gives its results, then you might notice that difference. Apple Music on the iOS also updates faster than the Android version, so keep that in mind as well. And lastly, YouTube Music is a great choice for those who enjoy other material from their favorite artists such as performances, remixes, covers, music videos, and even user uploaded content. Add another 30 pesos and you get ad-free streaming by YouTube Premium. If you enjoy video content as much as your music, this streaming service is worth checking out. So what music streaming service do you guys use? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and don't forget to visit yougatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. It's your boy Enzo and stay safe.